Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Junkyard Digs. This one's gonna be a freaking wild ride because this morning I woke up and chose stupid. The other day I bought two cars to do a revival which will come out at a later date and one of them was essentially a parts car because it had a blown motor. Well, on Marketplace this morning in the town next door, what do I see besides that motor? Well, that's convenient. Maybe I could do something with that car instead of just getting rid of it. I close out a marketplace and there on my main feed is an event tomorrow. The Iowa All Breeds Jeep Show. Suddenly I knew exactly what I needed to do so I jumped out of bed, got dressed, got in the truck, grabbed the trailer and we are heading to pick up one of these cars, throw some tires on it, do an engine swap and hopefully have this some bitch at the Jeep Show tomorrow at noon. Here we freaking go! Yep, that's right. An AMC Eagle. An 85 Limited at that. This thing has a blown motor, was crushed by a tree, and came with this one, which is the one we're intending to do a proper revival on, for 50 bucks. Now you might be thinking, Kevin, you're absolutely crazy, and you're probably absolutely right, but if you don't know anything about an AMC Eagle, they have this little feature right here. This was the first four-wheel drive car. So we're going to pull this thing out of here, get it loaded up on the trailer, and make tracks for the shop. to the shop. I haven't picked my motor up yet. I'm meeting the guy tonight. The only thing I know about this car right now is that I was told it has rod knocks because some guy was driving it and the oil light came on and he just kept driving it. So there's a chance it ain't half bad. And we can just throw some 2050 and some magical goo and some gear oil in it and it'll stop knocking and then we can just focus on all the other stuff. Okay well we're missing a starter solenoid already and battery cables. We just need a solenoid and some battery cables, so we can we can source that. All right, there we go. And bonus battery cable. Let's get her plugged in. Thief! Thievery! Thievery! Oh, he's stealing! That was magical. Did you hear that? La. That wasn't the right filter, but it is if you tighten it hard enough, <laughs> I guess. Just set that out of the way. Oh yeah, I believe that's a GM carb. I could be wrong, but that's a GM master, GM carb. That's a Ford ignition system. In fact, there's a Ford DuraSpark boss right under that Ford star starter solenoid. That's a GM bean, no, no, sorry, that's the Ford bean can box. That's probably a GM or Ford wiper motor. Ooh, another bean can box. Basically, AMC just went around like, hey, what did you guys stop using five years ago that you still got left over? Oh, a bunch of DuraSpark boxes in 1985? Yeah, I'll take those. With that being said, seeing that it is a DuraSpark, it should have sparks. Yeah. 
Wow, the exhaust actually works. It's coming out of the exhaust. Son of a gun. them down. Electric door locks, digital uh, clock, fuel gauge, temp gauge. I'm gonna say no on the stereo. This sounds like the engine. <laughs> Ooh, papers. Gold. That wasn't that long ago. 2015. Okay. That makes sense that it would fire up that easy then. Um, it runs pretty damn good. I'm still not convinced that's bottom end noise. It seems too rapid. You want to take the valve cover off then? I think I do. Let's. I'm gonna poke around and listen to things a little more. It'll either throw a rod or I'll figure out what it is. Let's take this valve cover off and see what that noise is. It sounds like either a piston smacking something. I'm just not convinced that this is a dead engine. It runs way too well. And even if it is, <laughs> fill it with exclusively Lucas oil stabilizer and then go. Something I just thought of. Uh, before we go any farther, let's see if the four wheel drive works. It's missing one. So I think I know it's wrong. So as we can see on this side, there's a CV shaft, or whatever it's called, and on this side, there ain't. It's spinning. Yes, we have four-wheel drive. Alrighty then. Some progress has been made. I have our valve cover off. Uh, I think it is really bottom end noise or, or a wrist pin or something crazy that's detrimental to the motor, but I would say it doesn't get louder, but it absolutely gets louder, but it doesn't get worse maybe? I don't know. We're just gonna throw some 2050 in this and I'm gonna put everything back together and we're just gonna rod knock this thing through the whole day. The motor's already junk. I'd have to get a whole new crank and everything. And let's, let's be real, right, come on, remember. The car is also junk. It's not worth our time or effort. Jesse has got the new replacement P or Shiny. CV shaft that came with, and it has a torn boot, and I think that's why it was out. So we're gonna take the boot off the old one and put it on here and get that back in. Dakota, what are you doing? Eating everything. And pooping everywhere. It's 2.30. I still haven't heard a word from the guy that has that motor, so I think we are confirmed not gonna have a motor in time. So yeah, it sounds like uh, old Nafi McGee here is gonna be what we have for the weekend. Honestly, it'll be pretty fun. I always wanted to see how long we can make a rod knock motor last. One change we did make while I had that off was I cleaned the front. And I uh, put a little message on there since it's knocking like a Jehovah's Witness, we might as well make it sound like it's talking like a Jehovah's Witness. Okay, Jesse, here's what I'm thinking. Look at the off-road special they have. Sliders right here. Oh yeah, we're gonna no. call those sliders. We should absolutely weld a plate of steel right there. We could. Are we going to? No. No. But <laughs> I'm thinking this exhaust has got potential to go just straight that way. <laughs> oh, just nope. 
Oh god, look at that one. Oh. <laughs> what even is friction? You know what else I'm seeing? A weak spot. The U-bolts? We could pop those out and lift this. We could. Especially without the exhaust in the way. We could throw some lift locks out of 2 by 4s or something in the rear. And then maybe, I don't know if O'Reilly still has them, but we could put those one thingies in here that we find in every car spring. I'm sorry. The like twist in things. Are you saying we use wood on this car? That's too nice. All right, so at this point we've confirmed we're not gonna have a motor in time and there's no way how we get it in, in time. And remember, this is a $50 car that's rusty as hell and crushed by a tree. We are definitely not ruining anything of value. We're under here doing oil change right now and I just noticed this U joint. That's a, that's a really healthy one. Might actually try to get one of those. <laughs> That's not gonna last. Uh, Jesse's about done with the CV shaft. We'll get all that sealed up and in there somehow. First things first, let's get this oil out here and put something really nice and thick in. Ooh, black metal. Oh, it's shiny. What the hell is happening right now? This isn't bolted or something. That was moving too. Oh, it is loose. I think we're missing one right here. <laughs> this car's gonna die. 50 yeah. bucks. I bet the engine is gonna last forever. I, yeah, I bet the engine outlasts the chassis. Yep. I think I agree with you on that. We got our U-joint out from our front drive shaft. As you can tell, she's a, uh, she's in better days. Yep. Beautiful. That's a tire. Let's go get some new tires and all the parts we need. All right, Jesse, you grab the 2050. Yep. That's the start of our concoction. Now, anything on this shelf that we find that says stops, knocks, or fixes engine noise, we're putting it in. Engine restoration. Oh, too thin. This, that goes in diesel. There's some zinc. What do we want? The high mileage and stop leak. Oh, that does feel thicker. So we'll get some of that. Ah, yes, of course. Oh my God, look how dirty the bottles are. The Bardol no smoke, the thickest fluid known to man. <laughs> the question is, how many do we need? One, there's only one. Oh, gear oil? Dude, yes. Oh, the 85140. So let's see, that's a quart. This is a quart, this is a quart. We have five quarts. We could probably just use Let's No, yeah, let's just put that back and then just get two singles. So, I see what's in here. Oh, oh man. We got our lightweight tractor wheel. <laughs> Once again, huge thanks to Trickles here in Ames. If you guys are in the area, this is where you should absolutely come to get all of your work done for tires and auto repair. Derek's a great guy, Darwin is a great guy, and they always hook us up. Very last minute, I mean like 20 minutes before the doors close. Awesome guys here down at Trickles. Look at these tractor tire looking things. <laughs> we saw these when we pulled up and we just started laughing. So let's see how they look on the car. These are General Grabber ATX. They're a tread pattern somewhat based off the BFG but a little more closed and a little bit softer. Uh, they are a good bit less expensive than the BFGs, and I've never ran them, but I've always wanted to try a pair, so this will be a perfect test. Yeah. Oh, dude. They just went from goofy to awesome. Not the question. 110% yes. Oh, yes. Oh, oh, hell yes, dude. Let's get these bolted on. Our tires are looking good. I'm filthy. Jesse's filthy. It's like 6:30 on Friday night. The sun's going down already. We're gonna just. I get. You know what? Let's film this as a montage so we can get this damn thing done. Just one of those like meep meep burp burp meep 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 burp. Those montages. Meep meep burp 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 meep 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 Pay 
away from us the car right there. Well, that didn't work. I look back and it's literally dripping up, up. Down. down, down, down. Oh. So we got a few fluids here. I think like three quarts of oil and the rest is just yeah. motor honey. That's what we're making today. Good old AMC moonshine. It's, it's thick. <laughs> That's Kevin's lava lamp. I don't know if you want to. <laughs> so first things first, is the Bardol no smoke. The 85W140. Kevin. And we gotta get that zinc in there for that flat tap at cam. You know, we care about that cam in this engine. Wash all that down, it's a little more 2050. All right, that should do it. Is it gonna knock worse, or a little less, or the same? I'm gonna go with the same. It's gotta build oil pressure, so it's gonna be really loud until it gets it. Come on, you old hog. It's damn near quieter. Engine's fixed. Let's get it up in the air and uh, get a lift kit on this thing. There we go. I've seen these in every damn car we've ever worked on. I finally get to do it myself. Should be like an inch and a half to top things off. All right. Even though this lift kit up front cost twenty dollars, it was twenty-two dollars, which I think technically still totals the car for the price we paid. Juicy. Ta-da! Yeah. All right, it's midnight. Windshield's out. Is it already midnight? Yeah, it's getting, it's getting there. How? Jesse is cleaning up the interior to get all the glass out of it. I have raided the sticker drawer, and we're gonna stock car these fenders. And then as a little treat to our viewers, I've gathered a whole collection of stickers people have sent in to put on this car and wish us luck. Some of which are very accurate to the car itself. Alrighty, it is Saturday morning and it is time to lift the rear of this car. Went down to O'Reilly's and got some shafts that are the same configuration, but three inches longer. So we're gonna see if those work. If they do and you wanna do it yourself, they're off of a 2000 to 2005 Toyota RAV4. <laughs> Rise, Eagle. Rise. It's currently like 12.10, which means we're already 10 minutes late. 
So we're gonna put the cameras down, load this up, and get over to the off-road park. Let's do it. Ta-da! All right, we've made it down to the Cambridge OHV Park in Cambridge, Iowa. Uh, we filled the car up and it started leaking on the trailer, so I don't really care. We'll see if the tech crew cares, and we'll see if they like our battery hold down, which is just zip ties. Let's go find out. And assuming we make it from the trailer parking to the actual gate. With that, we fired up the leaky and squeaky eagle and clattered our way towards the entrance. Man, if it ain't the engine knocking, it's that CV joint we put in. What is up with that? I'm not gonna lie, it took a little more convincing than I was anticipating to get this car into the vent. Thankfully, our buddy Steve from This Week with Cars showed up and was able to convince these guys that we were a special kind of stupid and that it was okay to let us in for the day. We are currently about to head out on the trail, I think. To the right here, Steve? Yep. Let's see what happens. Having zero experience driving this car, I needed to figure out what it could and could not do. Coming into the very first bump on the trail, I saw a log sticking out of the ground and decided, eh, let's see what our ground clearance is. Turns out it was much less than the log. <laughs> we actually smacked the A-arm into this little stump so hard that the camera quit recording and we bent the A-arm a good inch. Things are off to a great start. Drive around the obstacles, not into them. <laughs> On top of rolling five deep in this AMC Eagle, we'd never been here before, so we didn't know exactly where to put a camera and when. Either way, we found our first obstacle and were able to conquer it with ease. On a smoother section of the trail, we thought we'd take some time to survey the passengers of the vehicle on their experience so far. That was an awesome We're gonna die. <laughs> Jesse! It smells funny in here. With their positive reviews submitted, we soldiered on to the next obstacle. Well, there was something to run in. Uh -huh. Just remember, smoke is an indication we still have oil. <laughs> oh, we didn't bring extra oil in, did we? <laughs> a minute later, we ran into some traffic, so we stopped to check out a clunky noise from the front right. As it would turn out, our CV shaft that we installed would be the first one to leave the party, and pretty much came out the second we hit the trail. It was right about here we discovered the CV shaft laying in the back seat of this car was definitely not to this car despite having bolted up. Granted, we did have the coil spring spacers in, but the CV shaft was about two and a half to three inches too short. Why is it so short? In an effort to reinstall the shaft anyway, I had everyone get on the hood and jump up and down to compress the suspension enough that I could get the knuckles slipped back into the socket. Okay, so <laughs> we kind of got the CV shaft back in. Uh, while we were under there, we realized I think we put entirely the wrong CV shaft, not to this car or something, because it's like three inches too short. So I don't know what how that happened. Had everyone stand on the car and jump it up and down, and I slammed that thing back in the cup. So the bearings are like half in the cup, but they're half back in the cup. So let's go hit the mud hole. If it isn't obvious already, there's two things I quickly learned this car was lacking. Number one, a low range on the transfer case, and number two, a properly operating transmission. On top of this, I think our motor was also down all of 50 horsepower. You're not supposed to go fast through the trails out in Cambridge, but we didn't have a choice if we wanted to make it up a hill. You'll get to see a great example of what I mean in our next event, the obstacle course. The obstacle section at the Cambridge OHV Park was a far cry from the trail ride. There were three paths built into the course, green being the easiest, blue being intermediate, and pink being the most challenging. One section of the pink route included what the locals called the gauntlet, and it proved to be pretty challenging for most road legal vehicles. Seeing that we had the ground clearance of a watermelon, we decided the best route was probably stick to the green route and rely on speed and power to make it over anything. Uh, now some a little different making their way through the course. 
We got a car coming through here. Having made it through our first obstacle, I came to our second obstacle. At this point I got to experience something Jeep definitely gained from their military heritage, which was a healthy dose of hurry up and wait. A few minutes later we were finally ready to move on to the next obstacle. This one I like to call the transmission tester, or in other words, an 8 foot pile of dirt. The transmission tester did its job and gave us all the first visual representation of molasses going uphill in January. Despite building enough ground speed to where I could make it to a level section of the hill, the eagle was slipping so bad that it would not go forward anymore. At the bottom of the hill, the track safeties reminded us that the speed limit for this course was a crawl and that we were vastly exceeding that by trying to make it up the hill, so they said it was time for us to move on. Further down the track, I found my next obstacle, a single 4x4 log which once again proved to be a little too much for that AMC Trans. I could tell the AMC really wanted to live up to its eagle heritage and soar over the obstacles instead of simply driving through them. However, we had two things limiting any excessive application of speed or power. One being the track officials and the speed limit on the course that is set for safety, and the other one being the transmission which is set for a brisk forward neutral. Either way, we were still able to make it through the entirety of the green course in a car that cost us $50, had excessive rod knock, a transmission with the consistency of a Slurpee, and a CV joint completely detached from a car, leaving us stuck in two-wheel drive. The the Eagle was absolutely the least expensive car on the course and arguably provided the most fun. Because of that we figured it needed an honorable parking spot while we got ourselves some lunch. Just act natural. <laughs> that stump we hit when the camera cut, we uh, might have bent a couple things. <laughs> After lunch we headed out to the side of the track to watch some jeeps operate in their natural habitat. Seeing that we do not possess one of these majestic contraptions ourselves, our team understands very little about the Jeep and the people that reside within. We figured some distant observation and data acquisition would hopefully shed some light on Jeep things and exactly why we don't understand them. From our observations, we were eventually able to conclude that we were at some form of a breeding ground. Those that were not frolicking in the rocks with all the others seemed to be doing a traditional mating dance on some form of wobbly platform. <laughs> Others were found quite literally flexing to hopefully attract a mate. In the interest of science, we threw another quart of transmission fluid into the Eagle and brought it out to see if this was indeed exclusively a Jeep thing and we wouldn't understand or if anyone could do this in anything. As you could tell, our immediate findings were that the Jeep people were definitely onto something with their increased tire height and operational four wheel drive. Regardless, we got the Eagle up on the balance platform and gave her hell, by which I mean literally everything it had to go forward. This is the first time I've ever been on a balance beam with a vehicle and really enjoyed it. We looped back for a second try and I accidentally ended up doing a big burnout thinking that it was the transmission slipping. However, I ended up pulling off one of the best balance attempts I had seen all day.
Now that the eagle had shown it could successfully do the jeep mating dance, it was time to see how well it would flex. With all of our scientific testing done and the car still knocking away just as well as it had at the beginning, we figured we had time to hit the trails for one more lap before the day was over. I let Steve drive for this lap because he really liked the Eagle. It was actually identical to the one that his dad had when he was a kid. We never confirmed, but there was a good chance it was actually the same car. Steve! Heck I yes! Your own <laughs> you didn't like that? No. What? If we rolled, there would be two people on top of me. This is the best $50 I've ever spent. I don't know about you guys. Luke just brought up a uh, great point. It was $5 more expensive to get into the event than buy the car. Of course, we haven't factored in parts, but we could have done this without most of those parts, I'm fairly sure. By the end of the day, I was quite proud of our $50 AMC Eagle, and happy to say we were not the ones hooked to a Mini X being towed home. However, right as we pulled up to the trailer, the CV joint caught the frame and somehow wrapped all the way around up front, pretty much putting the parking brake on the front right tire. Once the car was loaded up, we headed over to the awards ceremony where the AMC actually took home an award. It got third place in the other category, simply because there were only three cars. Okay, at our last uh, class award, is for all the other mates. Third place goes to Kevin Brown for his AMC Eagle. Yeah. We bought it yesterday for 50 bucks. All right. The last award announced was Best of Show. It went to an old man who was seated off to our right. This absolutely made that guy's day. And when he saw he won a hijack, he was thrilled. I can't believe that. Yay! Despite all the crap we give the Jeep people here on the channel, it was pretty cool to watch them come together as a community and make that man smile. With that being said, we want to give a huge thanks to the event volunteers that made this happen. Without them, this video, nor this event, would exist. So from all of us here at Junkyard Digs, thank you very much, and keep on jeeping. That doesn't define immortality, and I don't know what does. All right, so that's gonna do it for this episode of Junkyard Digs. I hope you guys enjoyed our escapades with this $50 AMC Eagle. If you did, please consider subscribing to help support the channel so we can do more dumb shit like this. There we go, that's fixed. Either way, this car was a blast to drive off-road. It did way better than I expected in a few ways and way worse in other ways. I'm honestly absolutely dumbfounded that this car still runs and drives at all, nevertheless, as well as it does. So, props to you, AMC. You made a good engine. If you guys enjoyed this episode, like I said earlier, make sure you subscribe. Subscribe to all of our friends here on YouTube. Turn the notifications on if you have not. We will see you right here next week for another episode of Junkyard Digs. And that will potentially be another AMC Eagle. There will be another AMC Eagle, I just don't know when. So you gotta subscribe to find out. We'll see you guys next week, bye.